Joining me is Mark Bays, Urban Forestry Coordinator for the state of Oklahoma. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me back. I've been really concerned with our trees and the ongoing drought, and I keep, you know, urging homeowners to continue watering even as we enter the winter months. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of damage taking place and a lot of questions of what's salvageable and what's not, and I was hoping you might help shed some light on that. Yeah, t two years in a row of, of record heat and drought, it's taken its toll. And we're getting phone calls left and right about, can I save my tree? Is it possible? Uh, what do I need to do? What do I need to prepare it for the winter? Mm -hmm. uh, and sadly, uh, sometimes the best option is to remove it. But there are many great opportunities that they can do a little bit more for that tree to make sure it has a little bit extra going into the winter and maybe with some light pruning, give it another year just to see what it happens. But there does come that time when it's, and it's really time just to pull the plug and start with something new. So we try and ask people to be really conservative in their approach because once you remove a tree, you can't put it back. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but there does come that time that you have to do that. So sometimes you wanna wait and see what, what right. happens. Right, yeah. Well, here's a, a good example of a tree that has sustained some damage. Yes. Uh -huh. what, what do you think the outcome of this one's gonna be? Well, this, <laughs> this is one that actually that I think uh, shows some good signs because mm -hmm. you can see it's had a watering system on it with this, this gator bag. Mm -hmm. And so it's been getting a little bit of water through the months. But even with that, what you see is you have a little bit of dieback in the crown mm -hmm. up in here. Now, the good news is it's less than 50% of the crown mm -hmm. and so there's only two or three branches in here that are dead and so the tree is stressed but it's not completely stressed yeah one of the signs we see a lot in a stressed tree are these mm -hmm. little water sprouts along the trunk and it's essentially the the moisture isn't really functioning uh, out on the very tips and so the tree is trying to replace those leaves and what better place to do that than right at the central core of the tree it's kind of like it's kind of like us when our fingers get really cold and, and the cold, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, we shut it down just to keep our core alive. And that's yeah. what the tree is doing here. But that again, it's also wasting resources from the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, I would think that what the person should do is definitely remove the, the dead mm -hmm. because the dead out. is mm -hmm. a place where, of course, problems are going to move into the tree. You might get some infection move in here. Right. And then the other thing is absolutely remove the sprouts. Remove those water sprouts. Remove the wa water sprouts. Yeah, I think we could use a, a good layer of Probably mulch use down a little here. bit of mulch here. I mean, it's good it's good to have the water source, mm -hmm. but absolutely we just, you know, the mulch is going to protect your trees going into the winter, whether they're newly planted trees like this or really your established trees. Plus it'll continue if it's an organic mulch to break down and, and put some nutrients into the soil. How long should we keep feeding our, or watering our tree? Mm -hmm. Well, this one, you still need to do it in the winter time because mm -hmm. it might be dry during the winter. So you don't have to do it every week, every two weeks, but I would do every three weeks to every month as mm -hmm. long as we don't uh, have any significant rainfall or snowfall. So as long as you keep that root system moist, mm -hmm. uh, not saturated, the right. tree's roots will continue to grow through the winter months, even though the top might go to sleep for a few months. Okay. Let's take a look at another tree that has a little bit more damage to the crown. Okay. Well, Mark, this is the same species of oak, but clearly uh, hasn't done quite as well. <laughs> right. Well, you can kind of get a better view of, of course, the, the sprouts that are mm -hmm. coming up on that. And, and that's really indicative of whenever, you know, a tree is really going into a serious state of decline, it just wants to replace all those lost leaves. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you can see is that's actually happening throughout the whole trunk of the tree. Yeah. And so it's, again, trying to keep the core of the tree alive. And so the tips on it, which is where all plants grow and the trees grow from the tips, th that's obviously gone on that. Mm -hmm. If you look at the percentage of green on this tree, it's close to that 50% mark that we talked mm -hmm. about earlier about if it's more than 50%, it might be time to go, but you have to look to see where that 50% is. Yeah, it's all at the core. It's here. at the core, mm -hmm. it's on the sprouts. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the tips on this are, are obviously dead. So whenever you were to come up and just take a look at it, mm -hmm. you could just really get a sense that, you know, that's mm -hmm. just brown and dead. And, and you can even do that all the way back to the trunk of the tree and just see how far back brown it is. But to me, you can almost see cankering mm -hmm. right here. And so, so this is one of those trees that it, sometimes is a hard call 
yeah. but you, you really probably would be better served if you took it out and started again. It would never look the same again. It, it's never going to be the majestic tree that we all hope and pray it will become someday. Well, I really appreciate you uh, visiting with us today, and I sure hope that uh, this drought breaks so we can save some more of our trees. I agree. Let's, let's hope for it. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You bet.